it was alleged that the newspapers were not aware that a large percentage of the population of American citizens were unhappy with the ruling establishment, did not feel their voices were being heard, and they voted against what everybody thought was, was the leading candidate, and instead voted for this rank outsider, a very unpredictable and generally unpopular person, this businessman, this egotist, this rakish character named Donald Trump. I thought what was missing from the newspapers, and I think more than that, from Americans in general who watch television, who read books, who teach in universities, who are among the educated classes, which inclo almost includes everybody these days. The reason I say that, in my lifetime, born in 1932 and becoming a journalist in the 1950s, and at the time I became a journalist in the 1950s, we journalists, whether we worked for the New York Times or the Philadelphia Inquirer or the Chicago Tribune, were generally the first of our family to have gone to college. And when I say college, I do not mean Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Stanford. I mean Brooklyn College, or in my case, the University of Alabama. We were not going to the elite colleges. If we went to college at all, it was we were considered scholars in our family. But what we were, what we were, not true today, but what we in the mid 20th century America, we were outsiders. We journalists were of the outsider class, whether we were Italian heritage as me, or Jewish, or African American, or Spanish, whatever. And we saw through the outside looking in with our nose pressed against the glass, we looked inside at power, at privilege, at maneuverings within the political system, at hypocrisy, at outright deceit. We saw all this, and sometimes if we had courage, we wrote about it. And we did have courage, because most of us had come from parents or grandparents who had, knew, who had firsthand knowledge of persecution in foreign countries, and who came to this country on the run and brought with them the spirit of unfairness. And we, as the inheritors of their spirit in journalism, we were the children of those, period, of those people. We brought not cynicism, but skepticism of power. And it was never our ambition to be part of power, because we were chroniclers of power. We were critics of power. We were viewers of power. We were outsiders. Well, those days are long, long, long gone. What we have now, 50 years beyond what I'm talking about, the group of journalists who go to the same elite schools as the most privileged people of power. Obama was a college professor, a Harvard man, and he was teaching, while a president for the two terms, essentially teaching class to the higher classes, including the journalism of his time. Now you have this rank, foul mouth guy with this, all this awful blonde hair becoming elected. And the people in general, oh God, it's so embarrassing. It's like, they, I mean, they were so stunned. It's like having, uh, uh, their, their world is shattered. And they're, why are you so shattered? Why are you so stupid? Don't you realize that you join, you journalists are so blind. You don't know, as journalists, anything except being educated from the time you're, you're privileged little kids. I mean, even poor people, black people, Hispanic, still want to be like the privileged white people. And what I'm getting at in a long-winded way is that we journalists have failed. We're a failed profession. The pride that my generation took being strong as a force against the powers of prerogative, the powers of privilege doesn't exist anymore. Doesn't exist anymore. The journalists now want to be part of the power game. They want to get on Air Force One. They want to join Trump at 21. They want to have dinner at 21 with them. They want to be clustered in Washington, which is the most, most decadent city. It's the most evil empire. If I were running Washington, and boy, do I sometimes have grandiose ideas in the middle of the night if I was running Washington. I would get half of those reporters out of Washington, 
Break up the Washington press corps. Send them all over to the state capitals. We have 50 states. Put two reporters in every state. Instead of covering Congress or the cabinet or whatever, let the people who are from these states report the mood of the states, report the feelings, the findings, the personalities that are in parts of America that are not in in the main mainstream, the main light. And we tell our story not from the power brokers that are clustered in Washington, those privileged power and generally rich people, but we tell something about the results of law, the results of privilege, the results of ignorance, the results of, of, of bad decisions in war. We cover injured soldiers, we cover the life of, of, of farmers, we cover a grease mechanic, a, a guy that's some redneck sheriff somewhere. And if we knew the America that way, we would not be surprised by such an election as we had in the aftermath of Obama's eight years. Mm -hmm.